Hi, I was asked by a YouTube user on how to do a teleport effect. So a teleport effect is a very easy effect. You have your background, you have your foreground, uh, your subject. Generally what you do is you get a background, you get a plate of your subject in, in your scene, then they walk out the scene, you get your background, and then you do some type of transition, fade or cut, and you, base, you have your basic teleport. Then beyond that is all just creativity. So I'll just show you quickly how to do it with the one that I loaded last week. So uh, here we have my video. And we have me going up and down. So now I'm going to click on add layer. So I've got the bottom layer I'm going to name background. So I'll just call it back here. The top layer I'm going to call subject. And then I'm going to add another layer for my transition stuff. And I'm going to call that smoke. For now, I'm going to uncheck the smoke layer. Uh, make sure it's not visible, basically. Uh, the subject layer, I'm going to put my footage on again. So basically, my background layer and my subject layer are exactly the same. There's no difference between them. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to trim it down to the size of my actual where I want it to happen. So I think that's where I jump. So I'm going to trim it down to about four seconds. Yeah, I'm going to trim this all down to about eight seconds because I don't really want to be rendering stuff that I don't need. Here we go. So now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the point where just before I, I actually come into frame. So that's. Yeah, so that's at five frames. Wait, let me just double check how many frames a second this damn thing is running at. I think it's running at 25 frames a second, actually. Easiest way to check that. No, nope, it's running at 30 frames a second. So that's at five seconds and 22 frames in. So, da, 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 5 times about 30 equals that, plus 22 equals 172. I could have done that in my head, but I uh, just wanted to show you how you'd do that. So, I'm going to change that to 172. I'm going to change my in value to 172. So, I've clicked the, gone to my background, clicked on the media tab, and in the in section I put 172, out section I put 172. What this now means is, if I shut the others two off, is my background is actually just a frozen image. I know in the past I've taken an image and then brought it back in, but this is probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, it's just I've never mentioned it before, unfortunately. <laughs> right, so now I'm going to recheck my original footage, my top footage, which is basically the same, exactly the same footage as I said, but it's not being constrained. And we have a jump off here. Now, what I do is I find the point at which I want myself to disappear. So that is the height of the jump there. So at the next level I want to disappear so I'm going to click next 11 and I'm going to shut this off and click plus I'm going to go back one keyframe turn it on click plus now, as you can see I disappear the more astute among you may notice that there is a slight color difference again this was because I was using my camera on my phone and it doesn't have any manual settings so it changed the exposure when I came into view with this hoodie and so the, the footage is slightly different but that was that can actually be very easily corrected because I know it's actually a uh, just a bit of a color issue really so I'm just gonna bring that color up and as you can There you go. As you can see, there's less of a color difference now. There's a slight shake, but again, that's that will actually be covered up by our smoke, so I'm not too worried about that. So now we're going to check on our smoke layer. What we're going to do is we're going to find out our asset that we want. Um, I just happen to know that my asset, as I think, starts at frame 90 and finishes at about frame 220. 
what I now want to do is I want to go to our frame size 172 I, I believe it, I want it to start at because that's generally where our person comes into frame I think that gives us a good idea of where we want the explosion to start up oh, there it is what I'm going to do now is I'm going to position that over where I'm actually supposed to be which is here I'm going to rotate it click on media I'm going to click on key now I'm going to move through this and basically it's just about lining your footage up I think my footage is actually about a second or so off, 30 seconds off so I'm going to change that to I believe it's because this footage is running at 125 frames a second I believe uh, so 5 times about 25 equals plus 22 equals 147 so we'll try 147 hopefully that'll work and I think that's a bit too early if you think about it oh this is so long 160 that should be that's in between isn't it so as I come up there we go so we s we have that explosion I still think it's a bit early I want it to happen start there so that's a uh, as you can see I uh, I'll do it from two frames before I think three frames before so that's a uh, one six seven then I'm gonna bring it in like this and click on plus keyframe then I'm gonna go forward the frames that I disappear on and then I'm just gonna increase the size and click on plus and now as you can see I disappear in a puff of smoke this layer was then duplicated to give it more emphasis after doing that you can then colorize said layer so you can click on CPU colorize uh, bah, 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 bah. you can you can kinda get rid of these weird parts you can change mess around with the gamma and the, the value settings I don't know what I don't know why they call it value or exactly what it's supposed to do but it tends to actually accentuate the effect as long as you go into negative value it's same thing with gamma then the next thing you can do also is you can if you drop the green and the blue or whatever you can actually start changing the color of thine smoke to whatever color you want hence the reason in the actual video I have pink smoke and that is how you would basically do a teleport effect as I said beyond the actual technical aspect everything is then up to you in terms of just creativity so I'm gonna completely clear the scene click on reset all in fact I'm gonna turn off ledger sharker and restart it because I'll bet you it'll crash otherwise one thing I did is for example is uh, I got a picture uh, of my nephew and uh, well, I'll bring it into animation module so I got a picture of my nephew standing up and then add a layer and I'll move that down and I got, then I actually uh, f cropped him out and so the difference is is just this and him so if I now drop the transparency as you can see it looks like he's disappearing so again the same thing would apply here so what I would do is I'd go to let's say at what one second transparency is 100 percent click plus go to two second two seconds and click on there we go and we have a simple fade he goes away now on top of this I can then add stuff so I'm gonna click on add layer and uh, I'm gonna add this effect on which is not now working which is nice of it okay cool cool if it's not working I'll show you basically what I did if anyone may have noticed some people may have noticed if they've been messing around you get a particle setting 
on a Jashaka. Now, I don't like particles because as you can see, when I'm zooming in and out, and it, it moves the particles. They're very random. They don't seem to follow any real way of doing things. But I've got it on this section, so I'm going to click on Layers. I'm going to click on Style. I'm going to click on Texture. I'm going to click on Color Off. So they're white. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to render this out. As I said, this is very quick, so um, not. You would obviously do a much better version if you were doing it properly, very quickly. So what, I'm actually going to scale it down a bit. Yeah, oh, my computer stopped working. I find this with Shaki. This only happens when I'm actually uh, recording with Cam Studio for some reason. Uh, re and it's only really recently this started happening for some reason. But um, So I'm going to add my layers. I'm going to take the clean plate. Bring it on. Decrease the size so I know what to size. What size to make it. There we go. So minus 43, minus 40. I'm going to add a layer. And same thing with this one. So... Zero minus forty-three. Zero minus forty. This bottom layer, I'm going to bring that transparency back up. I'm going to add a layer, and I'm going to take my animation clip, which had this uh, weird ass thing going around, as you can see. And what we'll do is we're going to click on. We're going to click off it for now. As before, we're going to do basically just a fade out using the transparency but now we're gonna highlight this click on key and we're gonna rotate said mesh we'll change the size of it a bit as well uh, y scale I think And we're going to click on plus, and it will now envelop him, as you can see, it envelops him. And what we'll do is, from here, we'll add in a fade, so what we're going to do is, to add in a fade on something that you keyed out, I know in the past I've said you can't do it, the way I found out how to do it is click on colorize, get to your point where you want it fully in, click on plus. And then here, click on plus. So you're adding a keyframe at the standard settings. Now go out a few frames. And we're going to click on our colorize tool. And literally, what you're doing is you're forcing everything to become black. So effectively, you can use the brightness with that. Click on, so I've turned it to minus 500. Click on plus. So as you can see, it fades in, crosses over him. He disappears. Now, as I said, at the two second mark, what I'll do is I'll bring that brightness back down. Click on plus. So we have our child standing there, and now he's magically teleported across. So there you go. I've very quickly shown you how to do two different ways, and this one is actually using the particle settings inside of Jashaka. In fact, I'm quite happy with this version, actually. It's actually turned out slightly okay. It's not too bad. On top of this, then, you'd add on your sound effects, so there's different sound effects you can use. Um, and that is basically how you do it. So, as I said, you need a background plate, you need your foreground plate with your subject. If you were doing this with a moving camera, realistically then you'd have to sit film your subject in front of a green screen then you'd have to track your background and mat match move your green screen footage to the background and then beyond that it's exactly the same thing really just key him out and do the transition fade that's really the only difference but, uh, yeah as you can see 
very simple to do, very easy to do, and it's just a lot. A lot of it is just completely about creativity. Um, thank you for watching. I hope this helped, and um, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Bye.